Let's get going here. So today, obviously, we're going to lecture. I was able to, to get us one extra day of lecture by giving you the take-home exam. How's that going, by the way? Don't wait till Sunday night. Okay, my advice to you, do not wait till Sunday night. Um, well, unless you have all day Sunday and you have a good feeling for everything. I didn't time myself um, like really, really hard. It took me a couple hours, probably about two and a half hours to do it. So, um, all right, so last class. Everybody have the, the sheets that I gave you last time? with the formulas on them, the convergence tests. Anybody need a copy of that? I do for right now. For right now? Okay, anyone else need a copy right now? Give me one, okay. All right, so we were talking about the comparison test, right? And I'm not gonna write the whole thing down here, but there was a part three of the comparison test and it said that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n equals a constant, right, where c is a positive constant, that means not zero, not infinity. It's got to be positive, right? Then what was the what was the result? Alexa, any idea? No? Okay, thank you. So whatever, whatever one of them does, they both do. Right, that's the result. Now, <clears throat> this actually has a name. And in the sheet that I gave you, they don't distinguish it. They just write it as the comparison test. But in your book, they call this the limit comparison test. So from now on, if I say, hey, let's do the limit comparison test, this is, I'm referring to part three of this on your table. Make sense? All right. Where is everyone? Seems kind of thin here today. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of examples. Uh, Let's start with, I'm just going to do these straight out of the book. Let's start with sum n equals 1 to infinity of 2 plus negative 1 to the n over n root n. All right, so we have a series. We want to know if this converges or diverges. And so the first thing that we would do is probably the nth term test, right? And just see what happens as n goes to infinity. So if I do the nth term, I'm hoping my life will be good here and it will, what? What would be a good result on this? If this limit does not go to zero. If it doesn't go to zero, then I'm happy, right? Because then I can say what? If it doesn't go to zero, diverges. that it diverges, the series diverges. So I look at the, uh, ooh, I look at that, that's a root. And what's happening to the numerator as n goes to infinity? It's kind of, this is a little tricky. It, it alternates, good. So like if n is an odd number, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, then negative 1 raised to an odd number will be negative 1. Agreed? So if, if n is odd, this will be 2 minus 1, which is 1. But if n is even, then negative 1 squared is 1. It'll be positive, and then the numerator will be 3. So what's happening is that the, the numerator is kind of flipping back and forth between 1 and 3, 1 and 3, 1 and 3, 1 and 3 right, as we move through the series. So it's not going to anywhere in particular, is it? No, back and forth. But what you could say is that the numerator is bounded, right? It is bounded between one and three. 
And then the denominator, where's that headed? To infinity. And of course, bounded over infinity goes to zero. So the result is that the test fails and I need to move on and do something else. So then I say, all right, is this a geometric series? No? Why is it not geometric? What, what are you looking for for geometric? You need the n in the exponent, right? Which we kind of do have an n in the exponent, but the problem is it's mixed with n's that are not in the exponent, right? And that makes it automatically not geometric. Is it harmonic? Constant over linear? No. Okay. Telescopic or collapsing? We would have to write things out to see, but I, I don't think we'll be able to do like partial fractions or use any of the properties of logs. If you did your homework, you know what I'm talking about, to be able to see subtraction going on. So I continue. Uh, what else is on our list here? P-series. Is it a P-series? Kind of though, right? I mean, if this were just the number one over this, right? One over this, would that be P-series? Yes. yes, because you could put these ends together. That would actually be n to the what? Three halves. Three halves. So it would be a P-series. It would be a convergent P-series. But it's not because of that weird thing happening up, up on the top. All right, so it's not a P-series. Uh, do we want to run the integral test? You can't. The reason you can't is because to run the integral test, you have to rewrite this as a function of x. And you cannot have negative 1 raised to the x because x is allowed to be any number. And if you go back and, and think about exponential functions in college algebra, when we did exponential functions, you were never allowed to let the base be a negative number. So things get really weird when you try and raise negative numbers to real numbers. It's not bad when you, ha when you raise negative numbers to integers. That's OK. But when you raise a negative number to like you know, 1.675, what is that? Right? So we can't do that. So that leaves us with comparison, right? And when it comes to comparison, the main idea behind comparison is that you have to come up with something to compare it to. And that's your, your free will. We were talking about that in my 9 a.m. class. By the way, my, my 9 a.m. video did not come out today. Something happened with my recording. So I'm going to post this as their video. So they're going to hear me say the same thing over. Same jokes. You know how funny I am, right? So the same jokes, or it's going to be kind of boring. All right, so free will. Choose. Yeah. Give me something to compare it to. And tell me why you want to compare it to that. You, you want a hint? Just add a plus one to the bottom. Just add a plus one to the bottom. Add a plus one where? Like down here? Yeah. What will that achieve? Just remember this. Whatever you compare it to, you better know what it does, right? You need to compare it to something that you actually know what it does. One over n? OK. Any reasoning for that? Because we know what it does. OK. So I agree. We do. We could compare this and see where it goes. But let me challenge you a little bit more. When we were running through our tests, we said it almost looked like a P-series, right? It almost looked like a P-series. And so like the only thing that, that makes this, this not a P-series is that weird switching of 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. So why don't we try and compare it to the P-series that it kind of looks like? So like instead of n. And Laura, you can do that. OK, you can try that and see where it would go. It would probably, you, you, you'd wind up having the test fail. Unfortunately, I don't have time to run through it. But let's try that. OK, that fair? Now, that's a p-series, right? This is the same as sum um, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over, you said, n to the 3 halves. And this is p-series. What's P? 
three halves, that's bigger than one. A P series with a P of bigger than one will converge, okay? So what I'm doing is I am, com I am comparing this series up here to a convergent series. Now there is also another condition that must hold in order for you to use the comparison. And that's the sequence in here, which we call A sub N, must be positive. And the sequence in here, which we call B sub N, that must also be positive. In order to run a comparison test, those two things must always be positive. Do you all see that in your table, that it says that? It says it underneath on the left-hand side. You see it? Yeah? No? On comparison test, right here. So it has like the two sums, then underneath it it says A sub n must be greater than zero, B sub n must be greater than zero. So we need that, is that true? Is this always a positive number? Yeah, because the top was either three or one, right? And the denominator, n and root n, since n starts at 1, that's always going to be positive. So we have this is true and this is true. So we can, we can use this test. Now, does anyone know what, which one we can use? Or There was part 1, part 2, and part 3, which is the limit comparison. So can we do the, can we do the part 1? What does part 1 say? So if, if this series, right? If this series converges and some inequality is true, then this one will converge, right? Could we use that one? Yes, because this converges. What does part two say? If this thing diverges, then we have to show a different inequality and compare. So we picked, we picked a convergent series, so we're going to use part one. Now we could also use part three, but I'm going to try one first. Laura, if you would have gone with the one over n, then you would have used part two, right? All right, so here we go. I'm going to use part two. Um, what do I want to show? WTS. I want to show what? What's going to, what's going to give me convergence here? Yep, exactly. That's what I need to show. I need to show that this is true. Do you all, can you all interpret that from the table, that that's what I need to show? Okay. So a sub n, I write it down, 2 uh, plus negative 1 to the n over n root n. Is that less than or equal to 1 over, um, can I rewrite the, this one as n root n also? Is that okay with you? That's just me switching it back to that. All right, so what? <clears throat> Is this true? It needs to be true, right, in order to, for us to say convergence. So what can I do algebraically? Cancel out these denominators. Just multiply both sides by n root n. So these are really gone. I get 2 plus negative 1 to the n less than or equal to 1. Is this always true or not? For all n? No, it's not. We, we already said that this was always going to, it's going to be 3 or 1, right? 3 or 1, 3 or 1, 3 or 1. When it's 3, 3 is not bigger than, no, sorry, 3 is not less than or equal to, to 1. Now when it's 1, it's okay, but, but every time we get to an even n, this doesn't hold. Do you all see that? All right, so at this point, the test fails. Okay? It, it fails. So whenever your test fails, what I recommend you do is see if there's any easy way, easy tweak that you can make to what you chose that would solve the problem that you're having here. And I think the problem, do you see it, that this side, it actually gets as big as 3? And we would like for this side to be then bigger than that, right? 3 or higher. So is there any way you can turn this 1 into a 3? So where did the one come from? Right there? So it came from the top of your B sub n. And we can control B sub n, right? So I come over here. Can I change this number up here without changing the fact that it converges? Yes, because it's a constant. So what could I change that to instead? And change it to 3? That's fine with me. So let me change this to a 3. 
This is still a convergent P-series. I come over here, I change this to a 3, I change this to a 3, and now the inequality holds. Make sense? So what, what's the conclusion? Therefore, the original series converges. I'm just going to put CONV for converges the rest of the day. Now, any questions? In my 9 a.m. class, someone asked me, will you always be able to tweak this and get it to work? I said, no, it won't always work. Now, I think, you know what, Laura, can I, I'm going to try the 1 over n. I just, I want to, because I think that it's worth seeing. All right, like, let's say you chose something, you felt pretty good about it, you thought, I'm going to go with 1 over n instead, right? What do you know about this one? This diverges, right? This diverges. So what do you want to show? So I want to show the inequality is different now. I want to show a sub n is bigger than or equal to b sub n, right? So I want to show that 2 plus negative 1 to the n over um, n root n is bigger than or equal to 1 over n. What can I cancel out? Just the n's, right? I can multiply both sides by n, and they're gone. I can also multiply both sides by root n, and that will clear all fractions, won't it? Root n over here is gone. Root n over here is just going to give me root n. Root n times 1. Is this true? For some n's it is, right? For some n's it is. How about if n is 1? If n is 1, what happens? This is uh, negative 1. And you get 2 minus 1, which is 1. Is 1 bigger than or equal to the square root of 1? Yes, that works. But what if n is 2? Now this becomes 3. Is 3 bigger than root 2? Yes. Yeah? So try 3 now. If this is 3, this becomes 1 again, right? Is 1 bigger than root 3? No. no. Then you try 4. If you try 4, this is 3. Is 3 bigger than root 4? Yes. yes, right? But imagine what's happening here. The biggest this can ever get is 3, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to eventually get n big enough that this is going to not hold, right? Eventually. And so this inequality is going to fail over the long term. So now let's try and see if we can tweak it. How could we, or could we, tweak it? Do you see I'm not going to be able to tweak this? Like the last one, I could tweak it. I could come up with that 3, and I could always make that side bigger. But here, I've got to somehow make this side bigger than this side, or make this side smaller than that side. And I can't do it with just a number. I'm actually going to have to have n in there somewhere, right? Like to make this side bigger, maybe if I multiply by um, root n here, right? If I do that over here, then this side should be bigger than this side. But what I do to that side, I have to do that side. It's just, I can't control, see, I can't control this one. I can't change this one. I have to change this one. So how could I get, how could I get a root n on this side? How could I make a root n appear here? I would have had to have put a root n down here. So, and that's what we did just a second ago, didn't we? We had n root n. So, this, the, the end story here is that you can't always just do a quick tweak to fix it. But you always want to look for it because if it's there, you want to use it. All right, let's do another one. So, 
sum n minus 1 over n times 4 to the n.